What's up, dear streamers? Today we are drawing Lucy Gray in honor of the new Hunger Games movie that came out. And I have watched the, all the Hunger Games movies except for this one, so I'm really excited for it. And I also read the book as soon as it came out. So basically, I just started off with the basic shapes. I started doing her legs and finding out where the, place, where the feet placement is going to be. And then I slowly started working on the arms. Arms are not my favorite, and I suck at hands. As you can see, I am struggling dearly. Uh, until I finally decided on a pose for them. And I decided a snake would be in her hands because I wanted to draw her at the day of the reaping because her rainbow ruffles dress is iconic. <laughs> and so then I started with the face. Face has always been my strong point, which you'll probably see in future videos. I've always loved doing eyes because they just give you so much emotion. And of course she has pretty little eyelashes and I of course had to do her eyebrows. And then lastly her mouth. And that's the order I usually do all of the facial features. I started sketching out the hairline but I wouldn't get to that till later. And then I started working on her outfit. So for the dress, my original thought was to kind of go off of what the movie dress was but then I changed my mind and I could not get these ruffles right. I could not. It took me a solid five minutes. Then I finally decided to give her some nice boots. I could not entirely remember what she wore, but I'm pretty sure she would wear these boots just because she is in District 12 and it is pretty muddy and grubby there. So I thought those would go well with her character. I finally started finishing off her one hand because, again, I struggled with it. And then I started off on her hair. Lucy Gray has really, really curly hair. And I really love drawing curly hair. And so once I was done with the hair, I moved on to my hot chocolate because it's cold and I love hot chocolate. And yes, those are pink marshmallows. And then I quickly erased it and could not handle having the, <laughs> the little thingamajiggy still attached to it. So I ripped that off. Then I went over it with my Sharpie, and no, I will not tell you all of my art supplies. I know I do use Ohuhu markers, because I cannot afford Copic. So yeah, there's that. So I just went over and outlined everything, which in fact, line art is my favorite, contrary to popular belief. Line art is the best. But then again, coloring phase is also really fun too. So as you can see, I was just going over everything, and then I erased all the lines that were still there. Had a hot chocolate break. <laughs> and then I got out my markers. As you can see, these are my Statler markers, and they have a thick tip on one end and a small tip on the other. Then I got out my Ohuhu markers because I've never been able to afford Copic. And these are the ones that have brush tip on one end, and then they have the fine tip on the other. I personally really like the fine tip ones because you can really get into the smaller spaces with them. And the brush tips are good for just overall, like, large paintings, I guess you could say. And so here I'm just started swashing out all of the colors that I planned on using for her dress. I knew that I would probably want rainbow colors for her rainbow ruffles, and I just decided on going from red to green, because I want to use the purple for the bodice. And then I started going over what colors I should do her hair and her eyes, and then I started going over with my hoo markers and did the exact same thing. Then I just cut quickly to where I'm starting to color. I always start with skin first and then I'll add the blush. And I know she had quite a bit of blush. And then I started adding makeup with just Crayola markers. Because I realized I made a mistake and didn't swatch out anything else. So safe that was just Crayola. I added her red lipstick and her blue eyeshadow. And then I just went over with all the shadows that I probably missed before. Then once I had done that, I quickly started her eyes and then her hair. And with hair, I usually leave like a couple of spaces to make it look like there's light shining on it. It just makes it, or just gives it a little more of a professional look, I guess you could say. I've been doing that with a lot of my art lately, and I also like to blend at least two colors. So here you can see I'm blending the lighter color. sort of tan and then I decided to just fill in all the spots that I had missed with shading before 
supposed to blend it down, and by the time I got to yellow, everything was fine. And then I tried to use the blue, and the blue was supposed to blend in with the yellow to make it look green, but it really didn't, and I was very disappointed. So I just blended down with a lime green and a pastel green, and to make up for it not being there, I did add blue later on. And so I just finished up the boots, and then once I was finished with the boots, I made them a snake. My brother suggested, since I had already failed with the blue, that I make the snake green and blue, which I thought looked really pretty. I finished off the bodice by coloring in all the flowers and the leaves, and then I just started going over it with my gel pens. So my golden gel pen, I added dots, and dots at the hem of her skirt, and lines at her boots, just to make them all pop out. I also thought it looked really nice because she's supposed to be a circus performer, and I thought those would cut, catch the light as she's singing. And then I ended up going over everything with just a white pen to make everything stand out better, because I think everyone does that. And so yes, this is Lucy Gray. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave down in the comments who you think I should do next, if it should be another Hunger Games person or not.